Welcome to the Gadget Class channel on YouTube. This is it, the ultimate digital caliper roundup. Which digital caliper should you buy and why? Now I've got seven different digital calipers here and I've done close to 2,000 test measurements at set points along the measuring faces to come up with an average total variance or slot value for each of these digital calipers. So I've done all the tedious testing for you so you can make an easy and informed buying decision based on your budget and your needs. Some pretty clear winners came out and some pretty clear losers became apparent through the data set testing. Now, what makes one digital caliper or one digital caliper brand better than another? Uh, there's a couple key factors there. First, it's going to be build quality and design, kind of like the form and function of it. Um, if you got a lot of slop or a lot of play in between the ruling body and the measuring body, that's kind of a poor build quality or poor design there. That's going to lead to inaccurate measurements. Uh, the second main factor is going to be quality control. You know that with a Michitoyo, um, it comes with a inspection report, meaning someone at the factory made sure it meets their quality control standards. That's not the case with the cheaper Chinese ones. You don't know whether you're getting a, a factory first or a sloppy second. It could be right on par or it could be way off base. You just don't know. You are basically the last step in the quality control process. So let's take a look at this Capri here. I actually have a zero problem on this. If you're not getting zero every time, or it bounces around, it kind of fluctuates between half a thousand, zero, negative half a thousandths, you need to make sure you're cleaning these faces and make sure that you're using your digital caliper properly. Check out my other video on proper use and cleaning of these faces. Um, if you're still getting a, a lack of a proper zero on your digital caliper, you need to go ahead and send that back. You just became the last step in the quality control process. Now, when it comes to all of these digital calipers, they've got a rated accuracy or tolerance of 1.5 thousandths, meaning you should get the same value measuring at full depth as you do out here at the end, or it should be within 1.5 thousandths of an inch. So, Let's take a 10,000 feeler gauge here on the Nyko digital caliper. We'll measure at full depth. We're getting 9.5. 9.5. Okay. That's within a half a thousandths. So let's come out here to the end. 6.5. 6.5. 6.5. That's a total variance of three thousandths of an inch. That's actually not within tolerance or not within its rated accuracy. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, I got the same thing on the the Carrera and the Capri. They just barely fell within the 1.5 thousandths. And it kind of depends on what you're measuring to. But um, for my sake, that's not accurate enough. One other huge thing that came out on these three cheaper Chinese digital calipers, the Nyko, uh, the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh, the Carrera, the Capri, um, there's actually a small gap in here. When you're at zero on the out external measuring jaws here, you should be at zero here also. And I didn't notice this until I compared the data between the Michitoyo and the two eye gauging products to these three Chinese ones here. I noticed that they were off from anywhere from one to three thousandths. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And then I realized that there's a gap in there. If you're looking at a perpendicular plane through those jaws, you should not see space. Hold it up to the light. If you see light in there, your measurements are going to be off by that much. Stick a 1,000th feeler gauge in there. If it sticks in there, it's off. Check out my other video. I got a visual representation of a feeler gauge in there and holding it up to the light in comparison to like a, an eye gauging product. So you can see that the Nyko, the Carrera, the Capri, your internal measurements are going to be way off, just out of the box. Um, completely unacceptable in my eyes. So, which... Which ones do I recommend? Actually, the two eye gauging products. They seem to have fixed uh, problems with both the Absolute Origin and the higher end, as well as the Easy Cal or the standard Chinese version on uh, the low end. So let's take a look at uh, what we're comparing everything to first. Michitoyo is often hailed as a go-to brand if you don't want to worry about being a, you know, a volunteer to be a sloppy second uh, factory testing because you know that your Michitoyo uh, caliper was tested at the factory. So it's often the go-to brand. It's a great digital caliper. Absolute origin means it always knows where it is in relationship to zero. Doesn't matter how fast you move it. 
doesn't matter where you come out here and uh, increment measurement in relationship to a spot you can always come back to your absolute zero it knows exactly where it is in relationship to zero at all times there's no soft there's no play very well built and built to great uh, great tolerance factors performs very well um, over accuracy and precision in fact the average uh, variance between full face measuring and measuring out here at the last data point was around a half a thousandths. Now, that's $120. For about half that price, you can get an eye gauging version of an absolute origin digital caliper. In fact, it's so similar in design and function that you could almost mistake one for the other. Um, all four buttons perform exactly the same way. It performs right on, far, uh, right on par in terms of total data set measurement. Um, in fact, there was only a hair difference. It was almost negligible. And you could account that to user error almost. Very buttery smooth. All the same fe features and functions that the Mitutoyo has um, for half the price. But they did kind of fix something here. They upgraded the battery compartment door. There's no plastic tab that's going to break off that you have, like you have on the Mitutoyo. And they also included a 2032 battery. A much more common battery lasts a long time great battery a lot of you pc geeks will recognize that as the battery we use in all of our computers very great battery the battery compartment door is not going to break off and uh, they also included uh, the data port it uses the same data cable as a mitutoyo so your mitutoyo data entry cable will work on the eye gauging and vice versa now that's kind of a great feature to have i didn't realize it till i was doing a lot of cad work and uh, prototyping but being able to just measure and press a button and have the, the measurement go straight into my CAD program or my spreadsheet is actually a really cool feature to have. So overall this is my number one recommendation. Both the Mitutoyo and the eye gauging origin cow they do not auto turn off. You have to make sure you turn them on and off manually. Um, that's just kind of something we got used to with the Mitutoyo. Let me show you the Mitutoyo problem with the battery compartment there. That little plastic tab there is what can break off. And uh, you can see how thin that is. You can tell it wouldn't be, take much to kind of break that off. But it's a $120 caliper. You're going to make sure you're careful with that. Um, they fixed that. So eye gauging kind of fixed the problems with the higher end digital caliper. Same accuracy and performance for about half the price. Now come back down to like the $30 and lower category. And you've got their answer to the problems with the cheaper Chinese digital calipers. They've got the eye gauging easy cow. Look at the nice large display. The display takes up pretty much the entire measuring body. Nice crisp clear display. Nice big numbers. Really a, a great uh, display there. It also has the 2032 battery which is a great feature. And in terms of accuracy, this one actually performed right on par with the Mitutoyo and the Origin Cow. In fact, over the entire average data set, it performed just a hair better. Um, I could have just gotten a really good one out of the factory, but you can tell it's nice and smooth. There's no, no play in there like you feel on the other Chinese ones. Um, that's a big factor. If you can wiggle it, it's not going to give you accurate uh, measurements. So this is not an absolute Origin digital caliper but it performs just like the Nyko or the other ones and it performs really well uh, for its zero function. Um, it doesn't have an absolute zero function but it is a great digital caliper all around. And one other thing it has that is a pretty good selling point but it's not really something most people are going to use is the fractional measurement function. It does measure in fractions. Now when's the last time you measured anything in, a, in down to 128th? Most people don't think less than like 30 seconds of an inch, but it is there and it does work great. So it's a great digital caliper all around. This is my number two runner up. So that's it for today. I would not recommend the Nyko, the Carrera, or the Capri. I do recommend the eye gauging Origin Cow and the eye gauging Easy Cow. They kind of fix the high end of the market and they fix the low end of the market. So they've got it nailed. Um, if you want a good digital caliper, uh, I would recommend that. The eye gauging easy cow does have the auto off function as well. So that's it for this video. Make sure you check out my video on the problem with the internal measuring faces. Uh, I've got a video showing light shining through there. Make sure you check out my time lapse of the total testing process. And be sure to like and subscribe to the channel.